Hallo, ich bin Dörte Ernst. Hello, I'm Dorte Ernst from Fraunhofer IKTS in Dresden. I'm working on miniaturized actuators for active microoptics. And I'm Eric Forster. I'm working on optical systems for hyperspectral imaging at the University of Applied Sciences in Jena. Today's topic is lenses. Eric, you're our expert on lenses, aren't you? Well, here's something I prepared earlier, a little selection of lenses. They can be used in many different ways. Let me show you on the optical bench. Here we have some glass lenses. To focus an image, we have to move them on the bench. Just look in over there. And when I slide the lens... Ah, I see, it's coming into focus. But the people in Freiburg do it differently, don't they? Nasia, what kind of lenses you are using? We are using silicone-based lenses. Here is the card from the lens. It's soft and flexible. If I stretch it, I can change its focus by changing its curvature. On the other hand, the glass lenses are stiff and not flexible. And here how it looks like in our miniaturized concept. We can stretch these lenses by applying strain via these anchors which are directly embedded into the lens. What do we see here? This is our latest prototype. I have checked the alignment of the lens. Now you can see the motors are moving which will strain the lens. And what can you really measure with the setup? We can measure reference abrasions, deformation of the lens, and the focal length. Gosh, that was a tad too quick. What exactly does Nazia measure, Eric? Nazia measures the curvature of her lens, the focal length, meaning the distance to the focal point, and any surface profile errors. But Stefan uses liquid lenses. How does he measure these things? Don't they leak? I guess we should ask him in person. We're at the University of Applied Sciences in Ilmenau. Stefan Leopold will explain what this trampoline has got to do with his research on liquid lenses. We're manufacturing lenses, which contain a middle membrane made of aluminum nitride. Similar to a trampoline, such a membrane is very flexible. It returns to its original shape as soon as the stress is gone. And how do we get from a membrane to a liquid lens? We fill the membrane with a special oil and put pressure on it. Together with the oil, the curved membrane forms a lens. With a special microscope, we see that circular membranes have a spherical profile. Other optimized membrane shapes could also be cylindrical. To manufacture a very good liquid lens, cleanliness is one of the most important factors. Eric, aren't you also working on keeping the surfaces clean? How do you do that? My lenses consist of such a flexible material. Normally, liquids would stick to this surface. We coat the lenses with a nanostructure so that the water droplet cannot hold on, and this is how the surface stays clean. Could you show us such a structure? Sure, but naturally it's very, very small. Nanostructures are only visible in a scanning electron microscope, and that's where we'll go. The scanning electron microscope has an extremely high magnification. Here we'll see the eye of a moth, which is not smooth but has a knobby structure. Our microlenses have a similar kind of surface structure. You're interested in the nanostructure of the facets. We're interested in the facet eyes themselves. The eyes of such moths are the model for our microlens arrays. And those are made by the colleagues of IOF, right? Yes, and that's where we're going. We have attached such a microlens array to the end of a glass slide. And how many lenses are on it? 120 individual lenses. 120 lenses on such a tiny surface. This means that each and every lens must be smaller than the head of a pin. Wow! That's high-tech. Apertures to go with these can be seen in the next episode.